Now this morning, let us turn to the book of Daniel. You remember that we started off with Daniel, how he was taken away by Nebuchadnezzar into exile. God, through his prophet Jeremiah, said that the people will be in Babylon for 70 years. And so the period of the Babylonian exile. And we saw how the three friends of Daniel, they were tested in order to show their true character and their true faith in God. We saw how Nebuchadnezzar was humble because he had become arrogant and proud and God punished him in order, not because uh, out of vengeance, but in order to draw him to repentance. We find that Nebuchadnezzar died as a Christian, a believer in God. And last week too, brothers and sisters, you saw how God punished his successor, Bel Sajjah, when he never learned from what his predecessor had learned, and how he became arrogant, and how he actually asked for the gold and silver vessels from the Lord's temple in Jerusalem, and abused those vessels for his own personal drinking sessions, and how God punished him, and he was replaced with Darius. We come now to chapter 6. We have seen the character of the three friends of Daniel, how they were thrown in the fiery furnace, and now we come to the testing of Daniel. What kind of person was Daniel? Would Daniel also be like his three friends, remain true to God when he is being challenged and practiced in a, a challenge and threatened? And so let, I, let me just read for you first chapter 6 of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought, so setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because Daniel was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in Daniel. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and the satraps, the counsellors and advisers have consulted together to establish a royal statute, a royal law, and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for thirty days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, Establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the decree, the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Then this man assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 
30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, That Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, the king was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, to, to rescue him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to rescue, to deliver him. Then this man approached the king and said to the king, No, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and the Persians, that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. <coughs> but the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also, his sleep went from him. That means to say, he cannot even sleep. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste quickly to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel <coughs> and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up, up out of the dead. So Daniel was taken up out of the dead and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in his God. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote, To all people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every domain of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in the heaven and on earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. I hope, brothers and sisters, this account that is recorded for you this morning brought much cheer and encouragement to you. Having heard the earlier comments that I made from the beginning of this morning's worship service, 
all the dark things about sin and all, you come now face to face with this encouraging story. How wonderful it is to know the God we have come to believe in and know is such a wonderful deliverer, isn't it? That He, if He is willing and if it is according in accordance with His will, He can and will deliver the, them who trust in Him. Similarly, you remember earlier on how you saw the three friends of Daniel. They were threatened too and they found themselves to be the envy of people too. And how those who were jealous of them found the occasion to get rid of them. But they remained faithful to God even when they faced the danger of dying. If you please turn earlier chapter 2. Daniel chapter 3, and look at what they said to Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 3 of Daniel, and verse 17 to verse 18. The three friends said, If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And He will deliver us from your hand, O King. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the old gold image which you have set up. Remember how God also saved the three friends and delivered them, and how they came to learn that God is a protector of His people. And now Nebuchadnezzar came to realize that there was a fourth person together with the three friends of Daniel in the fire. And he came to confess that there was another person who looks like the Son of God. Now we look at Daniel here. And what do you learn in chapter uh, 6 of Daniel? Concerning Daniel, the character of Daniel. Well, the first lesson you learn is this, brothers and sisters. You are clearly told here, and the picture that is given to you here is that Daniel was a righteous man. He was a righteous man. Look at what you are told there in verse 4, Daniel chapter 6, verse 4 to verse 5. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, means to say concerning the things that he was doing as the appointed uh, officers of the king. But they could find no charge or fault. They could find he was a blameless man because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then this man, these enemies of Daniel said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel, unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. You see there, brothers and sisters. There was no corruption. There was no injustice. There was no unfairness. There was nothing wicked about Daniel. Daniel lived a very careful life. There was no compromise with Daniel. There was no such thing as a never mind. La. Once only, never mind, la. just once. There was no such attitude in Daniel. What a great testimony Daniel left for the glory of God. And what an example, brothers and sisters, you ought to arrange your life in similar ways so that at your funeral, people can come and say, it's a good Christian. It's a good Christian. The Apostle Peter said that every Christian ought to live such a life like Daniel. If you turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3, look at what Peter says about the Christian responsibility. To 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, you read, Having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who reveal, reveal, re, reveal your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So may I remind you, brothers and sisters who are Christians, 
be a Christian that will glorify God. If you have to suffer, suffer as a Christian. Not suffer as a sinner. So let your attitude be that way. You remember that Daniel reminds you of another person. Daniel reminds you of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, we are told, was also a man who was blameless, sinless. The religious leaders who hated him, the religious leader had to make up false accusation against our Lord in order to get him crucified because they could find nothing wrong with our Lord Jesus. Can you turn to Matthew chapter 26? Matthew chapter 26 concerning our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 26, <coughs> beginning from verse 59 to verse 61. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last, two false witnesses came forward and said, This fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Find that. They could not find fault with our Lord Jesus Christ. And how to get rid of him? How to get the Roman governor to sentence him to be crucified? Well, make false accusations against him. Like what you saw earlier on in our reading about Paul, the same religious leaders many years earlier were the one who had falsely accused our Lord Jesus Christ and the same group of people now accused the Apostle Paul using the same wicked, lying tactic now to get rid of the Apostle Paul. The Roman governor in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ could see that our Lord Jesus Christ was innocent and was a righteous man. If you turn to Matthew 27 and look at what you are told there in Matthew 27 and verse 24. Pilate took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. The just person, just. The word there, just, means righteous. A just man is a righteous man, is a holy man, is a godly man, a just person. That is what you are told about the Lord Jesus Christ. But what about yourself? Will people who knows you say that you are a just person? Especially if it be so that they are able to attend your funeral, will they say that about you at your funeral? Here is the funeral of a just person. Or will they say, I am a troublemaker, I am this person, I don't want to come on, you know. They drag me, they, they force me to come to the funeral. On my own, I will never even want to come to this person's funeral because I don't like this person. You have to make up your mind. So now, later, it will be your funeral. How have you been living your life? Are you living a life that can be described with the word just, blameless, like the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, the enemies of Daniel, they knew that they could attack Daniel only in his religion. Because Daniel was a blameless man. So, look at what you are told. Turn back to Daniel chapter 6. Turn back to Daniel chapter 6 and look at verse 5. <coughs> then this man said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. In other words, we know 
that Daniel's religion is different from ours and we can attack Daniel's religion and get Daniel to trouble. They knew that Daniel took his relationship with his God seriously. Because in his life, Daniel has already decided that he will obey his God. He will obey his God so seriously that nobody could find anything wrong about him. He will not cheat. He will not be bribed. He will not do anything that is sinful in the sight of his God. And he, this is how he will live his life till he die. Brothers, sisters, I have to ask you as your pastor, how have you been living your Christian life? How are you as a husband? How are you as a wife? How are you as a Christian at work? Are you holy at work? Answer me, brothers and sisters, answer me. Do you take your relationship with Jesus Christ seriously? Something that this morning you have to answer seriously. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And consider what the Apostle Paul said about Christians in 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, look at verse 14, 14, 6, 14. Eh? The Apostle Paul writing said, You keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. I want you to look at the word, Blameless. You know, uh, when you go and buy drinks, a lot of you like to buy sugarless drink. What is sugarless? That means the drink, there's no sugar in it. I want sugarless. I want kopi or koso. What does it mean, kopi or koso? It means black coffee without sugar. What is blameless? It means without blame. Nobody can blame you about anything about your God. That was how they saw Daniel. You look at Daniel, we cannot find anything wrong with him. He's blameless, sugarless, blameless. And Paul says, every Christian, keep this commandment without spot, blameless. Until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Blameless. Is it easy to be a blameless Christian? It's very difficult. If you were to ask my wife, she would tell you, he's not a blameless husband. Full of faults. In life, we admit, because of sin, we fail God. But it is no excuse. We have to get up and realize that our goal, our focus, our, our daily aim is to be blameless. Is to be the best we can be, is to be like Daniel. And why Daniel? Because Daniel followed the Lord Jesus Christ who came later after him. This is how you are to aim to live as a Christian in all areas of your life as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter, as a brother, as a sister, as a worker, as a boss, in all areas of life. The second lesson I want to draw your attention to concerning Daniel is found again if you turn to Daniel chapter 6. You find here, brothers and sisters, that Daniel was targeted by jealous people. Daniel was targeted by jealous people. If you look there, in the first four verses of Daniel chapter 6, that is what 
you are told, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these 120 officers, uh, he appointed three governors to, 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 to lead them, to, to look after them. And of these three, Daniel was one of them. That the satrap might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Meaning to say, so that the king will be no need to be so busy. He has 120 officers over the whole country and they are supposed to report to these three governors. And if the three governors have problems, then they go to the king. And Daniel was one of the three. And Daniel was a captive from Judah, a Jew. So we are told, then this Daniel, he distinguished himself above the governors and satraps. He was the chosen, the three, but among the three, he was a favorite of the king. Not because Daniel was very handsome, but because Daniel had an excellent spirit in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Meaning to say, three of them, right? Daniel was one of the three, right? The king was even contemplating and it became known to everybody that the king wanted to promote Daniel further to be even higher than the three governors. That means you have the king below the king, Daniel! Below Daniel, then you will be the three governors, a replacement for Daniel's position. And of course, la, people can become what? They become jealous, what? Hi, how kill it? We must not allow this to come to pass. And so it was in the past. The reason why there were there was a racial riot in Singapore was because we fought against the special rights of the Malay. And the Malay were very jealous. They said this is Malaysia. Malay should be the leader. Chinese cannot be the leader. And so, when they realized that the Chinese, they were better in business, they, they become richer because they are very good in doing business. Chinese people are generally that way. In every country that you go to, you will always find a China, a China what? A Chinatown. Now, of course, you will also find, they learn after the Chinese, they now have China. Japan town, Korean town, all, but it all started with Chinatown. Chinese people everywhere you go, they are only interested in doing business and making money and opening restaurants. Right? And so it was also now, in this case, uh, with, with Daniel, they were jealous of him. And in order uh, to stop Daniel from being the most powerful man after the king, they wanted to do something about it. You remember our Lord Jesus Christ was also facing the same problem? You remember how our Lord Jesus Christ was facing the jealousy of the religious leaders? They were not because they were angry with our Lord, not because our Lord was preaching the gospel. They were angry with our Lord because our Lord was more popular than them. Can you turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15? And look at what you are told about the enemies of our Lord. Mark 15 and verse 10. For Pontius Pilate knew that the chief priests had handed Jesus over because of envy. Envy. You see? The religious leaders were jealous of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you should not be surprised. What they do to Jesus, they will do to his disciples, right? And that was exactly what happened. If you turn to the Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, Acts of the Apostles, 13, look at what happened in verse 45 to the Apostles of our Lord. Acts of the Apostles, 13 and verse 45, But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And contradicting and blaspheming, they oppose the things spoken by Paul. You see that? You see, jealousy. 
jealousy, jealousy. And it continues on, brothers and sisters, today too. People, if you listen carefully enough, competitors normally, when they say bad things about others, competitors would say bad things because they are jealous actually. They are jealous of the success. They are jealous of the business. They are jealous of the promotion of their competitors. That's why you have what you call backstabbing. That is why people in the red race would normally meet with people who backstab them in order to climb up the corporate ladder. And why all this backstabbing? Because of jealousy. So don't be so silly as a Christian, okay? Don't be so silly in the world that when you are successful, people are happy for you. Please. Sometime and very often, huh? Even your own brothers and sisters are not happy about you. If your own brothers and sisters can be unhappy with your success, what more about others? So don't be foolish. Don't say, hey, uh, I'm so glad I got friends, I got old friends who are so happy for me. I have a happy family, I have happy children, I have good children. Not necessarily so. They may not say in front of you, but inside of you, they are jealous of you. And the world will even use death to stop others from succeeding. That's what exactly they were trying to do to Daniel. They wanted to kill Daniel. History is full of records of people who were burned at the stick, who were fed to hungry animals, who were tortured, and who were often frequently starved to death in the prison. Not because they were horrible people, but they were they, they had people who were jealous of them. In the case of Daniel, the enemies approached King Darius to make a law. Now, just now when I was reading for you, don't you think it was such a stupid law? Such a silly law? You go through all these things in order to find fault with how many people? How many people? To make a national law in order to get rid of one people they were jealous with. But that's human beings. Sometimes you just wonder, why make all this law? Because there was a black sheep in the, in the whole thing. Black sheep in the family, black sheep in the company, black sheep in among your career, uh, your practitioners. Because of one black sheep, you get everybody else into trouble. So you are told in chapter 6 of Daniel, look at what happened there. They, were, oh, they wanted this ridiculous law when it was actually intended to be to attack one man in their fire. Brothers and sisters, the world has no place for you. And so let us come to terms with it. Let us not be sad. Let us not be negative. Let us not be discouraged. This is the fact of life. There are some people whom the world will never like. Many of them are called Christians, you know. The government and the law of the land will be used against you. In fact, there are many laws in America that have been changed in recent years and used against Christians. Many Christian businesses had to be closed because Christians baker, Christians confectionaries, Christian restaurants refuse to help in gay marriages and they use the law and all these businesses have to be closed. It is now a hate crime to be involved in preaching the gospel in public in England. It used to be you need to use a stool, stand at any corner of the streets in England or London, and then you preach, nobody will stop you. The 
policeman will walk past you, the policeman will never stop you because you are in a freedom. You is a democracy. It's, it's, it's in, in the West. But nowadays, if you go and do that, and it has happened already so frequently, the police will come and stop you. In fact, that was what happened the last time we went to London. We were very surprised. And then the police tried to stop an African guy who was preaching in front of a, 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 a very crowded place, trying to preach the gospel, and they came and told him to get away or they will arrest him. A few steps away, as we were walking, a few steps away, there was a huge table on public road, uh, on public square, public, it's a public place. It, I don't think the person have license. If the fellow have no license, this fellow is a huge table on display, uh, Quran, Muslim literatures, tracks, people in, ter- uh, 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 in, 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 in coverings and uh, in, in their trudeau, you know, distributing. And, uh, the police walk past and quietly they walk past. And we were very sad rather than angry. Stop the Christian but they're not stop the Muslim. I know this is recorded so better be careful when you upload it may get me in trouble. But that's the fact. My wife is a witness to it. And we're talking about England. Supposedly a Christian nation. You should not be surprised when suddenly you face persecution and hatred in your office. Because that's the impression you get about Daniel. They were not happy with Daniel. I want to encourage you with one verse from 1 Peter. If you turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, look at what you are told there by Peter. Verse 16. 1 Peter 4 and verse 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. So, be encouraged. If you lose your job one day suddenly because you're a Christian, please don't say, But boss, boss, I decided not to be a Christian anymore. Please don't deny Christ. It's better that you go to prison and you get starved and even starved to death rather than to deny Christ. Because, brothers, sisters, remember this. Your life in this world is but for a period of time and soon it is going to be over. But the world that Jesus promises you is everlasting. And you have to think about this, brothers and sisters. I come to the last point now. And the third point, the third and last point is this. Learn, brothers and sisters, you find Daniel here Remain faithful to God despite the threat of dying. Look at what you are told there in chapter 6 of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. I want you to look at verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. He knew that he would be in trouble. He knew what was happening and yet Daniel remained true to his God. He realized that Daniel was absent when his three friends were thrown into the fiery furnace earlier on. But you find Daniel sharing the same characteristic as the three friends. Look at what you are told there in chapter 6 of Daniel, verse 16. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast Daniel into the den of lions. Darius, the king, knew that Daniel was innocent. 
He knew that Daniel was a righteous man. That's why he was about to promote him to be the number two in the whole kingdom. That is why you are told, right, that he tried to deliver him from the enemies in verse 14. And then look at what he it is said about the king in verse 18. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting for Daniel. And no musicians were brought before the king. Also the king, his sleep went from him. And not even sleep at night that night. Then the king arose very early in the morning. And he went in quickly to the den of lions. You see, by his gesture, by his, by his, by his action, that the king was very concerned for the safety and the life of Daniel. He loved Daniel. We are talking about a non-Christian king here, but he loved Daniel. He saw in Daniel a reliable officer, a reliable servant. The three friends of Daniel were rescued from the fiery furnace. Daniel here was rescued from the hungry lions. In order to show you what danger Daniel was faced the night, the king, as you are told, commanded all the enemies, the family members all to be thrown into the lion, the same Den of lions that Daniel was just recently rescued from. The same hole. Thrown the same, all these people, many of them. And we are told that before the body landed on the floor, the lion was so hungry, they were so hungry and so violent that they already tore the body apart. It's intentionally for you to see it was a really frightening experience for Daniel. But when God was there with Daniel, there was nothing that for Daniel to be a fright, to be frightened of. So it's true. To other people, you your situation may be in grave danger. But if you are at peace with God, if you have been a just person, if you have loved God, obey God, fear God, serve God, trust God, there's nothing for you to fear. God knows how to take care of His people. You see, the testimony of Daniel, like the same as the testimony of the three friends, glorified God. The three friends glorified God and called Nebuchadnezzar to praise God. Now you find Daniel causing King Darius to praise God in verse 26. How he made the decree and how he praised the God of Daniel. And we are told that Daniel remained faithful to God. And he was promoted in verse 28 of Daniel 6. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. That's why it's called the Middle Persian Empire. Medes and Persian at the same time. Combined Empire. We have come to the end of the sermon. Before I conclude, I just want to remind you of this. Brothers and sisters, the story of Daniel is not intended just to be interesting for you to read. It is meant to be an example for you to follow. Be like a Daniel. God rescued him. But look at what kind of person Daniel was. Be like that kind of person. I intentionally mentioned Irene to remind you that someone who was here before, sitting behind in one of the chairs here, is now today almost the end of her life. It is the same for every one of us. One day it will be the end of our life too. Let us be like Daniel. The people will remember us for being a believer of God, a follower of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our